And we're back. Bungalow update. It's going very slow, but what do you expect when I'm doing half the work? But anyway, we're here today with an update on bedroom number two. We're going to be looking at the mistakes I've made, the lessons I've learned, as always, and also looking at the budget that I had for this room versus the actual costs. Now, of course, I'm going to give you some tips along the way for DIYing, but if you are a tradesperson, please tune out now because you will be horrified by my lack of trade skills. And as you've just seen, I've been uh, sanding the windowsill. Quick tip for anyone, block of wood, sanding paper, wrap it in it, gives you a nice smooth, even finish. Shout out to Sparks Property Development on Instagram for that one, that was a nice little top tip. Another quick tip for you is this lovely blue stuff here, which you can actually buy in green if you're more of a green kind of person. But uh, this is known as frog tape and is incredibly useful if you want to get a good painting edge. So as you can see what I've done along here, it's just lined up so I'm not getting white paint onto the windowsill, which I'm about to paint black. So what I'll do is I'll take this up, put it on the white wall now, and when I paint up to it, it'll stop me getting black on the white wall. Oh, what do we have here? Naughty, naughty, matte black, flush against the wall. Obviously, I had to chip the wall. Ha! Ah, so now I've got to redo that. But anyway, let's forget about that for the minute and just appreciate how lovely these look. Oi, oi, just had a delivery. Look at the size of that. Gonna look like that, you can see that. Um, so that's the light going up in here with these, uh, you know, usual fancy style bulbs. But anyway, enough fooling around. I wanted to give you an update on this room and there's still plenty to do. As you can see, it's being plastered. It's now white, which is a really good start, um, but we're still awaiting uh, flooring, skirting, architraves, uh, the doors have gone on which are nice but need painting, uh, the handles are there but need finishing off and as I say the architrave as well. But yes it's been a, a room of many lessons when we initially took the wallpaper off as you can imagine a huge amount of the plaster was blown, it's quite old plaster and um, once you start taking some of it off well you're in for a, the whole world of pain following that. So quite a lot of work here for the plasterer. I think a lot more than he expected, a lot more than I expected, but of course I uh, had to pull off all the old plaster. He had to then come in and amend a lot of the holes and the gaps that there were, I think using hard wool. Someone's gonna correct me on that, hard wool. And then he's netted over the top, skimmed over the top of that. And um, yeah, here we are today. Uh, I've obviously went ahead and did a mist coat, which is basically where you take your first coat of paint dilute it down with water, 10, 25 or 50 percent, depends who you talk to or what YouTube video you watch. Uh, but you dilute the, the uh, paint down, you then do your mist coat, which tends to bond a little bit better with the plaster because it's uh, diluted and wet and it tends to seep in, I think. Seep? Is seeping in? Is that the right word? After that, I've added two coats of white. And then other things that you perhaps can't necessarily see is like, you know, where we've we had the old sockets, we've then had to replace some of the wiring where one socket spurred off of another one, make it safe, obviously build that in before the plasterer came round, we had to block up a window. The radiator is, a, is an ongoing project. We decided not to bury the pipes as the, the amount of work that would go into that would be too greater. Um, so instead what we're going to do is, is work with what we have um, I've actually tried to upcycle the radiator, that's not quite gone to plan, so looking at the, that new radiators right now, um, and we've just ordered the blinds. So what's left, as mentioned, got to do the flooring, got the blinds going in, got the light about to go up, and then the radiator, the skirting, the architraves, and the painting of the door, and then of course the personalising of this room, because this is my office, this is the the new YouTube studio that you're going to see on a more regular basis from here. Now, looking into the numbers, as you can see, I've done quite a detailed breakdown of each cost line for bedroom two. If I was looking at a new refurbishment or new buy to let, my first step wouldn't be to break it down like this. I'd probably do it more per job. So overall cost of plastering, overall cost of painting, 
kitchen, bathroom, labor cost, so on and so forth. However, as I was trying to work out a more accurate budget for this, I did come in and broke it down step by step. So let's get started. We'll start with plaster as it's at the top and I budgeted 400 pounds because I was thinking very much a bit of remedial works and uh, quick skimming over the top. However, I quite severely under budgeted because of course, additional work came up and it was more for the plasterer to do, meaning the total cost was £660 and that does not include the £76 that I spent on materials. So that was purely labour cost. I budgeted 25 for materials and that came in at 76 So between the two of those, I've almost uh, I've gone just over £300 over budget. Um, however, I did manage to make small savings on some of the other cost lines. For example, uh, skirting door frames, um, they're bought and they're just sitting there ready to go and be put up once the flooring's in. And I managed to save £7.75 on those, so very excited by that. Uh, wiring, of course, made a bit of a saving on because it came. It didn't really cost that much and it came in quite a lot under budget, so another £70.27 saved. Lighting, oh, I saved a pound and one penny, so also very pleased with that. Um, sockets and switches came in slightly over budget, as you can see, but I'm not too fussed about that because at the end of the day, they look really nice, they're matte black, it was worth the extra bit of money. Uh, blinds and curtains, they're on the way to us, so I can't tell you and vouch for their quality. They're not quite the ones that we'd hoped to purchase. However, we do think that within the budget that we've worked to, they will look really nice and match the other features in the room. Um, saving us 91 pounds on that cost line, Radiators, however, I didn't budget for because I thought we could upcycle the ones that we currently have. We're still going through that motion, but it is looking like I'll have to purchase new radiators, um, which aren't massive expense, but not something I budgeted for. So there's 70 pounds down the uh, down the drain. So uh, doors, hinges, doors, hinges, handles, and latch uh, came in slightly under budget. Flooring, we haven't actually purchased yet. Flooring, I've put down 400 pounds and hopefully wouldn't cost any more than that given this is quite a small room and we're due to have uh, quotes done for the flooring in the upcoming couple of days. Uh, but we'll put in 400 for the sake of this video and uh, it will tell us the overall cost at the end. Paint, I've gone slightly over budget, which I should know the cost of paint. However, because we again are working with a few different materials, we're painting our features in a nice matte black. Um, I'm happy to pay a little bit extra there. But looking at the overall budget, I allowed £1,385 and we have come in at, if we are assuming that we get we pay £400 for flooring, we've come in at £1,671.88, meaning that I've gone over budget by £286.88, which is of course a shame, but it's a good learning curve and learning experience. And I now know going forward exactly what bedroom one or the sitting room or the hallway should cost. You know, I know what things have come in over budget, what things have come in under budget, and I therefore should be able to produce more accurate results. We also put aside a contingency in this budget, and we also allowed for a fairly sized contingency with this project. And if you watch the bungalow tour that I did a few weeks ago, I announced that the overall refurbishment costs should be in the region of 40 to 45,000, um, with 45,000 really being with the contingency pot. So if we can come in under or around that 45,000, we'd be very pleased and this project would uh, really be profitable still. In summary, a quick, easy and useful tips for you when going into a refurbishment. Number one, maybe don't live there. It's a lot harder, a lot more stressful, and there's a lot of dust. Number two, and perhaps a bit more of a serious one, always over budget for what things are gonna cost you. As you've seen here, I allowed a fair amount of money for each item, yet I've still managed to come in over budget. And number three, always over budget for time as well, the actual length of time that this room or this job is gonna take you to do. Something my grandfather used to tell me as he was a property developer and enthusiast, he always used to say, if you get half the work done that you intended to, in a day's work, then you're winning and you're on track. And that's the beauty of DIY. It always takes longer than you think it's gonna take. And the finish is never quite as good as you think it is. So in order to get that high quality finish, it's always gonna cost you more or take longer. Number four, learn about the schedule of works. And I don't mean put together necessarily a fancy spreadsheet, but I actually mean 
the process in which a room is taken apart and then put back together. You know, what comes first? Is it the, the plastering, the skirting, the radiators and the heating, and obviously the painting and the flooring, and there's so many different elements that come into play, but which one comes in which order? Because if you don't know that, then you can have holdups. Like me, I've had holdups along this process, and sometimes you're stuck for a few days or a week because you're waiting on something to get done before you can then action the next pieces. So that for me is one of the biggest learning points and something that I want you to take away from this video. And just to let you know, I'm gonna be doing more updates like this video in the upcoming weeks and months. We're gonna be looking at this bungalow room by room, looking at the costs and the process of doing the refurbishment. Of course, I appreciate the audio is not the best, it echoes a lot, but that's because I am recording on sites in rooms without furniture, without flooring, and so on. So hopefully it will get better as time goes on. As always, I appreciate you tuning into these videos every week. If you've enjoyed the video, please hit that like button, drop a comment below with any questions, share this video with a friend that needs to learn about the costs of refurbishing, and of course, I will see you in next week's video.